It's like I a lazy even... Susan for shoes. A lazy, <laughs> a lazy Susan. It's like Narnia in here. Yeah, that deserves applause. <laughs> oh my gosh. Welcome to the closet. <laughs> okay. You designed all this. Yes. This yes. is incredible. Thank you. First of all, I'm gonna ask some rude questions. Go for it. How, give me some numbers here. <laughs> oh, no clue. No don't clue. ask, I have literally no clue. I'm scared to count. Okay. And don't forget that this isn't the only closet in the house, right? I'm this sorry, is the what? current <laughs> closet, then there is the other closet of the clothes that are not currently being worn. Well, if we get emotional for a minute here though, <laughs> what I'm seeing here is you led such a restricted life before and now you are oh, yes. being everything you want to be. Does this closet represent that? Well, you have to realize that to me, what, you know, clothing people think of, some people think clothing is frivolous mm -hmm. or like fashion, why does it matter? But you have to realize that my whole life, I was forced to cover myself, mm -hmm. right? So basically the only parts of my body that were showing were my hands and my face. You mm -hmm. had to be the most simple, quiet, meek, mild, um, and obedient person, right? And you needed to attract zero attention. Being covered up meant that I only mattered as an addendum to a man. Mm -hmm. Being covered up meant my life had to be this big because he shouldn't have a bad thought. Well, you know what? Now your closet alone my is closet, this big. <laughs> exactly. Well, to me, clothing says I matter yeah. on my own. Yeah. Not whether a man sees me and disregards me or a man sees me and is attracted to me. That's not my problem. Say I, it again, yes. Not my problem. <laughs> This closet moves. Yes. We see this on the show. Indeed. It is reminiscent to me of, do you remember that scene in Clueless? Yes, that's where I got the idea. Are you serious? Totally. I was like, wow, that's brilliant. I love this movie. Uh-huh. Like, yeah. let me just Go grab a little <laughs> Yves Saint Laurent. <laughs> I've never asked someone in their closet before, who are you wearing, but who are you wearing? Valentina. Okay, absolutely. <laughs> let, 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 me, let me put the Saint Laurent back where she belongs. <laughs> Thank you, okay. So as you know, you've yes. seen it before, but. I see Chanel, I see more Valentino. Yeah. Now, my difficulty is, and again, I love being my size, I'm perfectly comfortable as I am. I do think that God has a fantastic sense of humor, that he made me the global CEO with the world's largest women, so I love that. But the other thing is that I have a great difficulty in reaching things. Right. You don't have this problem. You are perfectly proportioned and fabulously gorgeous. Me, on the other hand, I walk into a supermarket, I'm climbing like a three-year-old okay. to reach the thing on the top shelf. So I wanted to avoid that in my own closet. So in order to do that, I went to these amazing closet makers in Italy, and I told them, is there a way that we can move the closet out of the closet, then it can come down, 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 down to my level? You're moving the ceiling, Julia. Um, is that fabulous? And then you do a little roll, and you have all your clothing. <sighs> at your fingertips without having to stand on your tippy toes. Chanello. <laughs> okay. I mean, are you kidding me with this? Julia, this is gorgeous. Well, I can't see you guys. There's some hide and seek to be had. Here. Yes. Hi you there. Know? Hi. Hi. How are you? Good to see you. Absolutely. Where are you? Well, I'm in, the, I'm in between the Gucci and the uh, YSL. Thank you. Great. <gasps> yeah, that deserves applause. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is incredible. It's like Narnia in here. You never, you never know what door's gonna open. All right, what is, give me one piece that pops out to you amongst all of these. So honestly, I'm standing right here and this is, I just got this from Louis Vuitton. Oh. This little, cute little number. A bit dangerous when the wind blows, just letting you know. <laughs> Look, red is your color. Definitely red is my, can you tell? <laughs> the hangers are red and have my name on them. So, so why that why piece? this piece? Because uh, Louis Vuitton took my daughters and me to champagne, like the actual place in France, France where they make champagne. Right. And I had such an extraordinary, it was just so much fun because- Hold that up for us. So in Louis Vuitton, you went to the champagne region mm -hmm. and drank Dom Perignon. Yes, not just Dom Perignon, but mm. something called P2, which is Plentitude 2, which apparently is like the oldest champagne you can have. And it has to be made in a particular way 
It's a lot of, okay. it's, it's really cool. The oldest, most exclusive champagne you could possibly drink. Great, that dress deserves <laughs> that, yes. So these are probably the most important piece of clothing in my closet. I know they look like plain leather leggings, but they have a very, very important story to them. So when I grew up, women, as I said, have to be covered head to toe, mm. and you are not allowed to wear pants. When I left my community, I was too scared to put them on because I had been taught that if you wear pants, you and your mother are going to hell because your mother is going to hell because she didn't teach you properly. So I had been out of the community probably nine months and I still had not put on a pair of pants. Um, and I'm in Milan, my first fashion week. So I'm in Milan and I'm walking and there's this woman, this breathtakingly beautiful woman and she is walking down the street wearing a pair of black leather leggings. And I know this is gonna sound creepy, I literally start following her. I'm not following her, I'm following the leggings. <laughs> I am drawn and fascinated by these <laughs> leggings. So finally, after a few minutes, I get the courage to come over to her and say, hi, literally in the middle of the street in Italy, I'm Julia, where did you get your pants? So she told me that they were a pair of black Saint Laurent leggings. So I girded my loins, steeled my courage, and walked in to Saint Laurent and said, with as much courage as I could muster, I would like to see the black leather leggings, please. And I felt like I had just, I don't know, gone to the moon, you know, done something super brave. So I go and I buy these leather leggings and I go to my hotel and I put them on my bed and then I'm too scared to wear them. <laughs> so my pants and I have like communion with each other for a few days. Finally, finally, I get up the courage and I decide, you know what, F it. If I'm gonna be killed, I'm going to be killed in a pair of <laughs> black Saint Laurent leather leggings. That's the way to go. That's the way to go. So, <laughs> so you did not get killed. You are here. I am here so far, so good, so far. And, and I will never, these stay with me always, no matter what. These are the lucky leggings. These are the lucky leggings. And these are the leggings that started true freedom for me. Julia, we have to talk about the shoes. Okay, <laughs> okay. so these are your shoes. You, I'm, I'm guessing, built this. That Incredible. is correct. It's like I a lazy mean, Susan for shoes. A lazy, a lazy <laughs> shoes in. A, a guesstimate on how many pairs of shoes you own? Is it in the hundreds? Probably. Probably. Okay, Probably, yes. Okay. Because I'm seeing lots of Gucci. Gucci, yes. Gucci, goo. Uh, why all the Gucci? So I am a size four, which is a ridiculous size. Okay. And so, an see, now that <laughs> is an appropriate, logical, legitimate size where that every brand makes. Now, Gucci and Prada have done something very lovely for me. They have allowed me to design my own shoes and customize their styles. Okay, so actually Julia, make my size. What, what, like what we're saying is that you are such an incredible icon in the fashion industry that you have Gucci and Prada on speed dial <laughs> and they let you use their shoe molds to make custom shoes. Yeah, it's pretty nice. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> you're the nice Miranda Priestley and she can move on over because you can call Gucci and Prada anytime. I can say that, you know, I would love to show you some pairs from my brand, but a museum is going to be using them in an exhibit. So I'm, I gave every pair I own to them. So I'm afraid Julia, I don't have any to show you. That's an interview first for me. She can't show us her shoes because they're getting their own display at a museum. <laughs> <laughs> Got it, okay. Everything we started, started with, shoes. with shoes. Yeah. And tell us what that key was that made your shoes so successful. Well, I think, you know, when I came into the fashion industry, which is really shocking to me still today, people still thought it was okay for women to suffer for beauty. And when I first started, I was told, Julia, do not use the word comfort, it's a dirty word. It's a dirty word in the fashion industry. And I thought to myself, well, that's outrageous. And I said, we're still making clothing for women that hurt. We're making shoes for women that torture them. We say beauty is pain. No, we yeah. should not say that. Yeah. Men don't say beauty is pain. <laughs> Why should we? Your shoes had this incredible patent, right? To yes. make them comfortable. Exactly, they had two patents pending. Um, one of them was on the shape of the arch. Basically, we altered the arch by two millimeters, which basically el elongated the arch from this to here. And basically what it did is that it even the pressure points across your entire foot, so your weight of your body was resting on your entire foot as opposed to the ball of your foot. And so I wanted to eradicate this concept of suffering for beauty. 
So that was basically the idea of my shoe line. All right, Julia, you reinvented shoes, you reinvented closets. <laughs> Let's go. I did wonder, did you keep any clothing items from that previous life? I put them in a pile and burned them to the skies. And sink.